Well, the impact alert day continues and although NFL football starts this evening, thank goodness it's not going to be at our bank. Look at that dark cloud over the bank. It is raining downtown with that rain occasionally heavy. We have some downpours around the rest of the first coast. We'll take a look at those and see what it means for high school football tomorrow evening. And then, of course, our weekend weather. Well, let's go back for a second. Hindsight, of course, always 2020. The weather team has put this together for us. Now, if you remember, we talk about how the dew point is the decider. That is, generally speaking, the dew point kind of lets you know how you feel. And even meteorologically speaking, it helps us sort of our first clue as far as what's the chance of rain and how much rain might it fall. Bottom line is the higher the dew point, the higher the chance of rain and the greater the potential for rainfall. So the weather team looked back at the numbers for the summer and this summer now goes down as the summer with the warmest morning lows. That means overnight through the early morning hours, the warmest we've ever experienced in Jacksonville. So what's that have to do with the dew point? Well, the temperatures don't drop below the dew point. So what that basically means is these are the highest dew points we've had for a summer ever. And the dew points are connected to the ocean. So that makes sense, right? The oceans are warmer than we've ever seen them. And so they're up there. And so although certainly we've had hot afternoons, that's really been the headline. Although the overall temperature second warmest in Jacksonville's history. Now, if you remember, June was very dry. Despite that fact, and because of the high dew points, because August or July and August were so wet, we ended up having our 10th wettest summer. And I also mention that because that's what's adding to this wet front and the flooding woes. Everything was already full as far as retention ponds and creeks and ditches. And so we get these rains from this front that's now going to slowly return as a warm front. Now, this morning's heaviest bands of rains were over southeast Georgia. Tomorrow, that's where the heavier showers will be, although I don't think they're going to be all that heavy. For the rest of us in northeastern Florida, I think tomorrow will be much like today. That is not all, but most of the heavier showers and thunderstorms tomorrow will tend to be during the afternoon and the evening, and they'll tend to come at us from the southwest and then head toward the northeast. Now, here's some good news. Not the fact that there's now five areas the Hurricane Center is watching, but notice they're all yellow. And what that means is low chance of formation. Now, I think the one exception is this system here actually already has tropical storm force winds, but it's not considered a tropical cyclone. So this could suddenly get a name, but even if it does, that's going to race away, certainly from our part of the world. Okay, so let's come back home and take a look. The easy thing to say for the next several days is that we're going to continue with wet weather, but tomorrow, most of the thunderstorms during the afternoon, in the evening hours, heading all the way out to the beaches, but that also means for sideline 24 for the main event, bowls at St. Augustine and really for all the other games going on, more like high school football from two Fridays ago, where plan on wet fields and wet stands. Saturday, not all of us will have the thunderstorm. That's about the best I can say. And Sunday, we'll begin to see temperatures cool down. Northeast winds might just start bringing that moisture again mid next week. Thank you, Tim.